This now conference will now be recorded. We have one member that has not joined us yet, one new member, and that's Chris Shive. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be on or not. Um, so we are we are just right at a bare minimum as far as a, a quorum is concerned. Um, like to call the roll. So I'll, I'll call the roll since we're absent uh, our secretary. And that would be uh, Chris Shive uh, is not here. Um, Jackie. Here. Jackie Goodwin here. Darcy DeVoe. David Fraser. Here. And I'm here. Okay. And we still have one spot that you left to fill. Uh, I have talked to uh, the city secretary and she and I have discussed some things and I'm for the for the purpose of the meeting and purpose of the record I'm going to give Tom Voth an excused absence um, he's down in uh, Carmen del Playa sent me a picture a few minutes ago uh, which I didn't really appreciate <coughs> All right. <clears throat> Do we have any public comments this afternoon? Is there anyone out there online in the public that would like to speak? If not, we're going to pass that portion of the agenda and we'll go into items on the agenda tonight, action items. And the first one is to accept the resignation of Maja Linderman. She has, uh, I have received her letter of resignation. So is Sandra and she resigned immediately. She is, she and her husband are moving to Elkins Lake uh, over in Huntsville. Do you need a motion on that? David, I would like to have one, yes, please. Uh, move that we accept the resignation. You have a second? A second. Second. Jackie, second. Thank you. In favor, Darcy? Aye. Sorry, I was trying to leave off my uh, microphone because I know how I get feedback. So. Okay. All right. Um, with that, I'd like to welcome you, Darcy, to the uh, Thank you. Advisory Committee. I know you're also on the Park Committee, aren't you? Yes. Uh, you're doing double duty. That's good. Thank you. Yes. Would you, like, would you like to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, my name is Darcy DeVoe. I've been up here for a little over seven years. Um, I got involved with city council a little bit, and I've been going to those meetings, and Dick knows me. And um, uh, last year, when I started coming to meetings, they had just done the um, citizens' um, sign-up for this, so I didn't get signed up. And then this year, I decided to sign up. And um, I'm a professional organizer, property stager, but I now work privately for an advertisement company um, full time. I'm our executive assistant for the company, and I've been with them now for five years. And Excellent. That's, uh, that's Excellent. We 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 can certainly use some of your expertise. Uh, Thank you. you well, welcome to board. I grew up on the golf course. Yeah, my stepdad, when I was growing up, ran a DeBell Golf Course up in Burbank, California. He, he's actually the one that set the par for the course. So I'm, I'm, I know about golf courses, but, you know, I don't golf. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. It's good to have you. <clears throat> um, Chris, since he's not here, I won't ask him to say anything. And I'd like to move on to the next one. It's approve the minutes. From our previous meeting, approve, uh, uh, motion motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Jackie, you second. I second. Second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All yes. in favor. Aye. 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 I hate Aye. these meetings on these. Uh, I hate these go to meetings because they're so impersonal. <laughs> And I have to take note. The next thing we need to do is a committee secretary. Maja was filling that spot. 
and I'm always looking for volunteers for that spot. Do we have any? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good with computers. I'm building, so I, I don't know if you would want me taking your minutes. You might not be able to figure out what I said. But I do I did notice that these are now these meetings are now up on YouTube. Yes. So whoever does the minutes now can go back and watch the YouTube to try to take the minutes. You know, like you wouldn't necessarily be having to do it all right now tonight. You can go back and write it down as you go, and it would probably be end up a little bit easier on whoever does that. You kind of fill in the blanks. With, with Darcy right. being the most informative of that, I would make a motion that she becomes the secretary. <laughs> yeah. Well, I watched some of your meetings, and I would suggest that you don't have me as a secretary because – you guys go way off your uh, agenda. <laughs> well, well that's, that way you can consolidate it for us. Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, let me get started a little bit first. And then if I see maybe if you put somebody there and then maybe in a couple months, I could see how this is going. I can get up to speed and, and, and help whoever is doing it. Well, it's actually, I think we probably need a, uh, a we probably need more than just the four of us before we make that appointment. So right. I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm going to defer that until our next meeting. And then David, so if you don't mind, you can, you, you can reach withdraw, withdraw the nomination and so moved on your recommendation to uh, postpone. Thank you. Okay. It's, it's, it's always down to the newest person, Darcy. That's what I figured from watching the, the, the old meetings. <laughs> yeah. And, and by the way, we do. We do go off, um, off agenda because this is um, these these topics that we're on are not always uh, completely subjective. We, right. uh, we we have to we have to move around with a lot of things and a lot of possibilities when it comes to managing, maintaining, and the future direction of golf course. Right. Uh, it's, it's an exact science if you're out there keeping the greens, but it's not an exact science when you're trying to deal with a business that is inside the city. And it doesn't necessarily conform to the city's standard as far as the business is concerned, and it doesn't necessarily conform with the outside world because it is in the city. So we have a we have a lot of latitude and a lot of discussion on a lot of things. So prepare yourself <laughs> and, and be ready and be ready to express your opinion. Next thing, we, and I don't see I don't see Chris. Yeah, uh, he's here. Is Chris Godwin on? Looks looks like it. I'm I'm here, Chad. I don't see you. I'm trying not to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> Put your camera on. <laughs> Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, oh, look there. There you are. There you are. Good looking guy right there. All right. Thanks, Chris. Chris, you're up for the next part of our, uh, our, our reports and discussion items and if you would give us a report on the status of the golf course, financials, et cetera. It's your floor. Yes, sir. So through the month of December, the golf course is at a – actually, I can no longer say deficit. The golf course has a surplus of $3,024.72 in the bank through – December 31st of 2020. That is um, approximately a $150,000 improvement from the same time frame uh, last fiscal year. Um, so golf course is doing very, very well. Um, we're in a really good spot at the moment. Um, and we look forward to a rock and rolling summer, um, hopefully starting April-ish, 
um, is a typically when things start to pick up a little bit. Um, but to but to finish the first quarter um, revenue positive is uh, is a huge huge milestone. Um, you know we're we're just really really excited for for the future. Um, I think we've got a a product that is not necessarily uh, where it needs to be uh, by my standards, but over the last gosh, I guess three and a half years it's been, doesn't seem like that long. Uh, golf course has made tremendous strides in the right direction. Um, so we, uh, we're only going to get better uh, this coming growing season. Um, we got three greens scheduled to be built starting probably, I think, early May is what I'm hearing from the contractors. Uh, greens two, four, and nine um, will be under construction from May Construction will be completed mid-June-ish, and the greens will open mid-September-ish, just like last year. Um, let me see. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of things going on, a lot of work being done. Um, you know, we, uh, we hired uh, Amanda Harkins as our marketing director in October. Um, she's been very active. Um, on social media, getting her names out there. Um, she's doing a great job. Um, and, but you know, again, it's a it's a process um, to to get her names out there. But we are headed in the right direction on on that front as well. Um, tournaments are starting to pick up again um, with the the COVID spike early last year. Pretty much every single tournament we had scheduled canceled. Um, but we have, gosh, I guess three tournaments scheduled in three tournaments scheduled in March, one in May, and two or three in April. Chris, and are you? Of, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. What about the Lions Club uh, tournament from last year? Have they rescheduled yet? Uh, they canceled their tournament for 2020. And they are scheduled for May 26th of of this year, and that is of the of the eight tournaments in the next three months. The Lions Club is the only returning tournament. So we have seven new tournaments on the books in the next two months. Great. So a lot of things to be excited about. Um, all right, you know, just all just let me let me interrupt you one more time, just for the record. Uh, this is the first time since I've been involved with the golf course committee, which has been about four or five years. Uh, and from my recall of history and accounting, this is the first time golf course has ever been revenue positive in the first quarter. Uh, that is correct. And if I'm not mistaken, it is the only time it has been revenue positive at any point throughout the year based on the records that I have found. They've had revenue positive quarters and things right. like that, but they've never been, but it's never been revenue positive at any point um, in, in the fiscal year. So. Well, the first quarter is correct. usually the hardest I understand because it's in the winter. Well, first quarter is is your toughest because that's a lot of your highest expenses. That's where you have, you know, uh, payments like on golf carts, maintenance equipment, pre-emerge, fertilizer. Um, so that's where you you exhaust a lot of your your expenditures there, um, getting ready for for growing season and trying to prep for trying to prep for spring. So, does your marketing director uh, does she have a written plan? Uh, we are currently developing that plan as we speak. Okay. Would Would you share that with us with the, with the committee once you uh, once you put that together? Uh, yes, sir. We are. Yes, sir. We're developing a. We're currently in the process of developing a, a full a full golf course master plan um, with, with the marketing being a an action plan within that master 
master plan. So once we all get it put together and finalized, say June ish, maybe July, um, we'll we'll have that information available for for everybody. And that action plan will be, will be going to to council as well. So. Okay. Excellent. Uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. If if you have some ideas, uh, do you go through Amanda to maybe follow through with these? Like in the summer, I know you have all of these kids, and you could do different age group specific programs for them. Maybe follow up at the end of two weeks or so with a little three six hole tournament, a little trophy or something. That way you would get the parents involved, hopefully. Uh, do you go through Amanda to talk to her about some of these things? Because I know we've, we've mentioned this previously and I know that uh, one of the ladies in our group has spoke to you about seven or eight women who want to get together and have like a group lesson and they don't want to wait until September, which was a date that you gave them. And how do you, how do you get these things going? What is the so, process? Yeah. So, um, so to, to clarify the, um, the, my ladies clinic the clinics are going to start back up in march when the time changes not september um was my initial was my initial plan um however after speaking with i believe i know who you're talking about but after speaking with her she she's insisted on going uh sooner than that um so we're in the process of finalizing all of that as we speak um and you'll probably see something out um, probably early next week regarding uh, that clinic there. Um, we are planning on doing junior clinics um, again this summer, you know, with, you know, last summer um, that never really came came to uh, just with COVID being as new as it was. Um, we decided it was in the best interest of, you know, health and safety of everyone involved not to do, do those things. Um, but we have a lot of we have a lot of events that we're trying to put together. We're trying to put together, um, you know, a city championship format that hasn't happened, I guess, since 2014. Um, so things like that. Um, yes, we are planning on doing our weekly clinics again, um, both for um, a ladies clinic, you know, during the week, um, a junior clinic on weekends again, as well as um, junior camps and stuff like that in, in the summertime it's you know the 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 reason that those yeah you hadn't seen those things in a, quite a while like i said COVID had a lot to do with it um yeah i realized that yeah with all that um so um but that is in the it is in the cards com coming up very soon when you do your junior clinics do you uh send this information to the schools to uh distribute amongst their students so that it's not just you have to go on your website to see it because a lot of these people never would do you actually uh send anything to the schools with for the students uh yes ma'am we we will be um a couple years ago we didn't have the resources um available to us but Essentially, what we can do is these kids, the way it was described to me um, was kids basically get a folder that they take home every day um, with information and stuff like that. And they um, do. talking with uh, Superintendent Webb, that, that's not an issue. He, he's more than willing to, to talk to the schools and, you know, bring them, bring them that information to, to send out to, to the parents. Okay. Chip, can't hear you. If, if we could, uh, if we have an audience out there inside this group, would you please turn your mics off because we're getting a lot of feedback. And I would suggest that what we could do is 
turn our mic off when we're not uh, we're not have part of the discussion. Um, Jackie, you want to finish, and then I, I want to go to Darcy. I'm finished. Okay, thank you. Hi. Darcy. Hi, Chris. Um, my name is Darcy. I, I, I've seen you at a couple meetings before, but I, when I was in trying to get up to speed on, on the advisory committee, I looked up some things and I haven't seen like your actual report that's supposed to be up online. It's your monthly report and it goes to the city website and it hasn't been posted since September 20th. And so I'm wondering if that's a problem with you or the city, because the city's had some problems with not posting a lot of things to its website. So I want to just make sure that it's them, maybe not you. And if it is you, why isn't your monthly report going there for citizens to look at? And then I wanted to also know if you have met the new city manager, uh, Roger Chan, since we no longer have Josh Ray with us. And I was hoping that you've met with him already and that you're getting a good rapport with him because we don't know how long he'll last. He could be here for months. And then um, uh, I also wanted to know if you, you've had anything going on with the signage to get, because that was a big thing for the last couple of meetings here. And because you are the city the manager, that you should be able to put those signs in some type of form that the city manager okays that because he can okay anything up to $50,000. And I can't imagine that these safety signs would cost any more than a thousand bucks for you. So I, I, I watched a lot of meetings and I, and I saw that, you know, everybody was concerned with the people walking on the golf course and tripping over the things and, and this and that, and it's like, if you need signage, you're probably gonna to have to go to your city manager yourself and say, hey, look, that shouldn't be something that has to go to council to get approved. If you've got a hazard out there, that's on you. So I, I just wanted to put that out to everybody that I don't think it needs to go all the way to a city council meeting to get a thousand dollars worth of signs. It just needs to get approved by your city manager. So I just wanted to put that out to you, thanks. Okay. Is that right, Dick? Dick should know. Is that that's correct, right, Dick? Got to turn on my sound. Uh, the thing that has come up with City Council uh, is that we need a recommendation from this committee on what signs you want what you want those signs to say, where do you want them put, what kind of material do you want them made out of, and an estimation on cost. Uh, we had discussed previously that there needed to be signs, but nothing has ever been presented from this committee to go to the council. Uh, Chris can do part of that, yes. But if we're going to have permanent signs that are going to be on the golf course, uh, I think that probably we need to do all the signs. There needs to be signs to warn about being on the golf course. Uh, there has been discussion about having some kind of nice sign at the beginning of the first hole uh, that announces rules and that kind of thing. Right now we've got a, uh, what do they call an A-frame sign uh, down in front, but there was has been discussion about having a uh, sign with all the instructions and such uh, on the first hole. Um, uh, different uh, markers for the uh, tee boxes. Uh, there's been all kinds of discussion, but there's never really been a recommendation uh, that could be voted on and implemented. Uh, I know this was something that I had talked with Josh about on at least three occasions and had been uh, trying to get something going. And the thing that kept coming back was that 
he needed to know more about what the golf course advisory committee wanted on the golf course, what kind of signage we were going needed to put out. So uh, it's something uh, that hasn't gone forward on the council, but something that could with a recommendation. Uh, Chip, David. Yeah, we're we're getting a little off topic. Um, we I think probably need to add this as a future discussion uh, with the direction. But right now we're you know finishing up Chris's report on the financials. Um, hey Chip, Chip let's if let you don't Chris go ahead and finish up, go ahead. Right. I was gonna say if if you don't mind, I'm gonna touch on Darcy's points for just a couple seconds and then I'll finish up real quick. Um, so Darcy, to, to answer your questions um, as best I can, um, the monthly reports I send to Sandra uh, for posting, um, I can say that um, I know they have been sent to her, um, but I will confirm, I will make sure that she gets a make sure she gets them again and ask her and ask her to post them on the city website for you but they have been sent to answer that question um and i'll touch on the signs real real quick um if i'm not mistaken um i know that the signs for the highland lakes golf course when the city still owned that one um that had to be um, done by Chief Smith and approved by council. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what the, the process is, but I believe it, I know that the ones for Highland Lakes required council approval. Um, and we never got to that point with, with Josh um, on, the, the, on the process of it. So it, it may or, or may not, um, but I do wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, I have spoken to Mr. Chan um, on a couple of, of occasions. Um, it hasn't really been a formal meeting uh, per se, but we have had a couple of conversations. Um, you know, he kind of, you know, he, he knows where we're at and kind of what the direction that, that we're going and um, seems to be very, very supportive of, of that vision. So, um, but we know we have not had a, a formal, formal meeting regarding uh, the golf course yet. Um, Dick? Dick? Yes. If, if the, um, if what you're, if, if the council is looking for a report from the committee on specifics uh, of signage, what it should be, where it should be, et cetera, um, I will, um, I will work with some of the members of the committee here and we will have a specific report to the council in let's see in March, within 30 days. It's going to take some driving, reviewing, and uh, work with Chris in order to uh, develop that specific plan. But we will do that. There you go. If to touch on that real quick, Chip. I will say case in point is Point Venture. Point Venture has signs at all of their street access points under the golf course, right. which, basically, which basically says no, uh, no unauthorized traffic during business hours. Right. You know, I, I would say Point Venture is the example, and I would say we need to mirror Point Venture sign as close as possible. I, I'm inclined to agree with you, with one exception, and that is, I think we should be the leader. Darcy? I was going to say, if, if someone needs to go and take pictures, I have plenty of time right now. I can go down and take pictures of their signage. And if you want, I, I would uh, volunteer to go speak with Chris and maybe get out on a golf cart with him and take some more pictures and maybe start something for you chip so you would have but i think you've you you golf chip so you're probably out there all the time <laughs> no 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 i just oh, you're I, not i'm not a golfer i just hit the ball oh okay <laughs> hit the ball walk around 
Okay, right. but, but, if, uh, but if anyone needs my help, help. Hey, Darcy, I'd like to do this. I, because I've been I've been part of this signage thing since forever plus three days. Uh, I started when Dick was a baby uh, <laughs> signage thing. So why don't we do this? Um, outside this meeting, we'll set up with you a time that we can get together with Chris and look at the and categorize the different types of signage that we need and then where those signages signs need to be placed and what the messages are going to be because it's it's not just one or two this this is going to be multiple signage in multiple locations with multiple messages so why don't why don't we do this uh you and i will get together as a committee and uh work on that i'll i'll get with you tomorrow uh, I give you a call or an email. Chris is the same with you, and we'll get together as three, sit down and get this started because we have talked about it for four years, and it hasn't been done yet. So at this point, let's see if we can't get something before the council that's concrete. All right, Chris. I've got, I've got a question for Chris. All right, getting back to the report. Do you have a percentage of? Um, Golf now versus um, uh, word of mouth um, as far as uh, playtime? Um, I don't have the number. Yeah, I mean, the course I is don't have always the yeah. um, I, I'm, I mean, if do you mind waiting? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I was just about, you know. I mean, if you give me just a, give me just a quick second here, let me. I'll pull it up real quick. It's on my software here. It won't take me but a minute to pull it up. I, I imagine the outside play, when I say outside, outside of the area, the immediate area, um, has greatly increased. Uh, <laughs> these, these people are coming from all over. And, and just a side note on, a, on the sign, the first sign I would recommend is telling them where number two. Keen is. Uh, yeah. And we, we we're in that parking lot, and people are coming by all the time, looking, trying to find out where number ten is. Um, yep. But we'll get to that. Um, the directional signage for ten is in the budget for this year, so that will be happening uh, here very shortly. All right. All right. And I'm just gonna pull. I'm just gonna pull these numbers uh, through December, David. Um, uh -huh. Just as a comparison here, um, it, it's loading. So hold on one second. No problem. Again, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So. Um, now, are you on the golf now? Are you looking for paid rounds, or are you looking for just total golf now rounds in general? Um, well, I, I, I'm guess I'm the back of my mind. I'm looking at is how much more revenue we would be generating if it was word of mouth versus golf now. Gotcha. So um, golf now. I mean, I, I, I'm taking. I, I, I assume we we just get a percentage of golf now as to what they're charging. So golf now chart. So golf now rounds through December was twenty six, fifteen. Um, non golf now rounds are approximately thirty three hundred ish. Okay. Um, of those, um, of those. So, go so revenue from our Golf Now uh, source is twenty nine thousand, and revenue from outside play is sixty thousand, comparatively. Okay. Is that it, does that include membership play, membership rounds? That does not. So, including member rounds is twenty four twenty three. Yeah, 24, 23 member rounds, and then like I said, a little, about 3,300-ish um, for about six, 
About well, six thousand outside versus what? membership. Yes. What? Give or take. Great. What? But it looks like outside play and golf now are about uh, within a couple of hundred rounds of each other. It ish. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say I would say that number will be relatively close come come year end. I mean, we we do get a lot of do get a lot of traffic on golf now. Um, and that's where the, the beauty of the new POS software that we're getting in March is you don't lose the exposure on golf now. So we can still maintain our presence uh, for people to see us. However, we no longer have to give golf now 80, whatever, 80, whatever the ridiculous number was in tee time value to, um, to utilize their their software so it's a huge huge asset great that's good right. thanks any more questions to chris on the report just on the report okay chris thanks a lot it's a good job please stay on we've got a couple more things we need to talk and you i really hope that you can have some input on it. All right, closing that part. Here to help. Closing that out. Let's go to discussions and report to city council. These are issues and items that we need to make a decision on and write a report and send it to city council on what needs to happen here or what our recommendations are at least. The first one are safety issues and these have been these have been passed along in any number of reports uh, over the last few years. And that's regarding golf cart path conditions at holes number seven, eight, nine, and 15. Now there are others, but these are probably the worst ones. At number seven, there there is a potential for turnover on, of golf carts going up, around, and back down the men's tee box on number seven. That needs to be addressed, and I would suggest it be addressed as soon as possible. Uh, number eight, that's a steep hill going down to the white and the ladies' tees. Uh, when it's wet, uh, it's dangerous. I'm surprised somebody has wrecked a cart there yet. On Oh, we, we have a candidate. <laughs> yes, you do. Several years ago. Yep. I have almost turned over on number seven multiple times, even driving as slow as possible. On number nine, we're coming down a real steep hill there. Even if it's not wet, it's a dangerous situation. I saw one of the coaches from uh, 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 I don't know, Hooterville or someplace out here that was with his kids playing a tournament, came down that hill, didn't realize it, came over the top of it and, uh, and crashed his cart. Uh, it just so happened to happen to be one of our carts. <laughs> uh -huh. I see you got your assistant pro with you. <laughs> All right, and on number 15 is another issue. Uh, David, I know you and Dick and Jackie are very familiar with number 15 and the, the problem coming down that hill. That, that's got to be addressed because people keep bumping carts keep running off to the right or the left. Sooner or later, somebody's gonna get hurt and the city's gonna be held liable for this because it has been on the record that these are dangerous spots for the last several years. And I would like, I would like to be able to send a memo to the city council uh, that we recommend that these conditions be rectified as soon as possible. And I need that. Uh, in the form of a motion from the committee and a second, if so, if, if so pleased. I would make that motion. Um, and if there's a second, I have something to talk about it, on it. I second it. Go ahead, Tarsi. Yeah, yeah my, my comment is um, uh, seven is an easy solution. You know, you, you just get up onto the top there and you go along the, the right side of it where, where many of the senior golfers go anyways. Uh, so just putting uh, the short-term solution is um, 
you know, pea gravel or something along that um, uh, so that it doesn't get muddy um, and then down to the front. And the big problem on, on eight and um, on 15 is that the tee boxes are on the down slope. And many times the first person down, you got th three or four carts going and the first cart stops halfway down the hill to the tee box because they don't want to walk instead of going down to the level. That creates a very dangerous situation for the next, you know, the second, third, and fourth cart right behind them. On uh, 15, um, I always stop at the top of the hill. I, I will never go down, you know, I'll just walk down and walk back up. The solution for 15, you know, that I see and uh, number nine is creating some sort of a switchback. You know, I don't know how they would be able to do it or, or you know, but, but the other problem is that almost nobody adheres to the uh, 90 degree rule on number nine. Uh, they go down that far right side because any any ball that goes over there, they're having to you know go down. That, and that on the right hand side of those hills is where you're going to see a lot of carts get tipped over too, especially if the grass is wet, because there's a lot of potholes in that dirt area there, and they just end up losing control. Um, but anyways, I, I, I think there's seven is the quickest, easiest solution. Uh, the other two is going to take some engineering and, and recommendations from probably a professional or um, um, organization or something to give us a, a quote as to what it's going to take to straighten those two out. Okay. We have a motion in a second to pass this along to the council uh, in written form. Do we have an, uh, all in favor say aye? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Aye. All right, I'll write a memo that up. Jackie? I have a question. Uh, well, I guess you were getting ready to answer it. So who is going to write this up? And are we going to offer solutions, ask for some kind of engineering uh, expertise as to options here or what? My, this, this is my thought. David, David is absolutely right on number seven. The solution yes. is there. Uh, it just needs to have it needs to be implemented uh, on number eight on number nine and number 15 we're going to have to bring in an engineer um at, at least the engineer to do some dirt calculations and route those things down now as far as the right hand side of number nine chris there shouldn't be carts over there anyway should there On the right side of nine, no, there should not be. Yeah. No, I mean, it's. I do know there's a lot of potholes mm -hmm. and things over there, but the cart path itself on number nine needs to be uh, either rerouted or switched back or some type of dirt work brought in to level that out a little bit more until you get behind the green. So, you know, I, I, would, I would say um, playing a lot of other courses. Um, such as like the Bandit, New Braunfels, not sure if anybody's played over there. Um, but they have a very good example of something we can do for that's very, very cost effective. Um, that doesn't require engineering. Um, and I would I would suggest speed bumps, you know, little asphalt speed bumps. Um, I think that would be a very, very good solution um, that doesn't cost a significant amount of money. Um, especially, especially on number like number eight, for example, you can probably put a speed bump there. Uh, number nine would be a little bit more difficult um, just because of the amount of downward downhill cart path that you have. Um, but I think for eight and fifteen, I, I mean, I think it's you know like a little asphalt speed bump, maybe two on fifteen, uh, force people to slow down. I think that would be a very cost-effective solution for those two holes in, in particular. I I know where you're coming from, but, it, and and I, I'm i inclined to agree if the engineer says that's what we need to do, but right now with these four holes, I'm not looking at cost-effectiveness because if the city gets sued for somebody falling over in a cart, 
and concussion or something like that, it's going to cost a lot more money. So I think we need a professional to take a look at these. Darcy? Um, I think the city was looking at hiring another engineer, if I wasn't mistaken. I think on one of the last city council meetings, they were looking at hiring somebody. And he might, whoever they hire, be able to take a look at this since he will now be a city employee. And um, also, they actually do make those rubber speed bumps, which are like rubber cemented down, which give you a little bit lesser than a boom, boom. You know, because when you hit a metal speed bump with a little cart, you're going to be like, you know, but they do make the rounded kind of rubber ones that, you know, might work as well. But I think the city was looking at hiring a, a, an engineer not too long ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And hey, Chip, if I, if you don't mind, um, you know, I would say, you know, maybe not a bad idea to list contact some of these courses, you know, like the Bandit and other you know other facilities around us that have these big that have these big dips i know i mean the bandit for example is a i think it's 16 i mean it's i mean you dang near need an elevator to get down this thing um but but anyway it may not be a bad idea to talk to them and kind of see what kind of policies and procedures they have in place um you know with with the same type of liability threat that that we have you know, may may not be a bad bad idea. Okay, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I just want to comment. Number nine, you know, if you're looking at if you do a long switch back after the first tier, all the way over to the right, you're not going to stop golfers from from trying to go over to the right. Too many balls go over in that area, and they're going to look yeah. at it. But if you do a switch back along the first tier, or, or right after the first tier, go down to the second or whatever third tier. And then come all the way back that cuts down the speed considerably but it also allows them to get their cart over to look for their balls over on the far, far right side you know that, that's just an idea um, okay. but again i, I agree it's going to be up to the engineers um but if you if you don't have some way of getting all the, to be able to drive all the way over to the right side in a safe manner they're going to go straight down the hills right oh, yeah. and let you on that on that hole you, you're not going to stop people from going straight down Dick? Yeah, um, we have had a second engineer now for almost a year. Victor has been with us uh, for a good while. And uh, they are available. And I'm not sure that we would be better off uh, hiring someone who specifically deals with these issues. Uh, but if you bring a recommendation to the council, it is something that the council can work on and decide where we would best spend money and how to approach it. Okay. All right. Will do. Um, I'll write that up. And uh, Dick, I'm going to send it, uh, I'll, I'll copy everybody, but I'm going to send it through you to the council. Yes. And, and, and one more thing, one more thing that, you know, that can be done somewhat immediately since we're going to be talking about signs in the future. But at the top of the hill at number nine on the far right hand side, put no carts, you know, with an arrow pointing. So in other words, no carts beyond this point um, would would help limit the liability because at least we warned them. Okay. All right. All right, moving along to um, conditions. Yeah. <clears throat> Condition of the greens and diminishment of areas. Uh, Dick. Yeah, uh, if we're going to put a sign up there, uh, the better thing to say is very steep hill, no carts on this side. Uh, something that explains it a little bit more, because if you just say no carts, yeah, uh, we've got those signs that say carts this way all over the golf yeah. course, and yeah. I don't know that there's many people that pay attention to it. Uh, another thing that could be dealt with uh with signs so uh the wordage and how we we put that out there is going to have a lot to do with how successful it is true and how well the the, the other one is how well the <clears throat> the, the um uh, the marshals are able to enforce it i mean if, 
if it takes somebody, if it takes moving somebody off the course to teach them that how to read, then that's what's going to have to happen. <laughs> okay, moving along. Our, our next thing on the agenda was the condition of greens and the diminishment of areas. And I know it's the uh, middle of the winter, uh, but the greens are beginning to show some signs of the um, uh, that that scale uh, that invaded us last year and the year before. And I was wondering if 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 we had a plan, Chris, to deal with that. And it seems like the greens are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller um, all over the golf course. Uh, I know that there's a thing called diminishment, but it's also something called spraying weeds and mowing. That's, uh, that's a uh, superintendent's uh, responsibility, but I know that you can answer that for me. Um, oh, okay, so how, how do I put this? Um, What you're seeing is the the true age of these surfaces. I, I mean, I mean, how do I? I mean, there's no real other way to way to put it. Um, the I mean, the greens are at a point now where we we struggle to even get grass on them. I mean, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but we sent a soil sample uh, out of the green on 15 uh, to a lab in New York uh, for analyzation. Right. And the lab's comments were, how do you even have grass on this thing? <laughs> you, you know, um, but those, those are some of the issues that, that we're dealing with. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just the age. The age and the the way they were constructed was wrong. And the years of neglect and bandaging is taking their toll on them, as, you know, as, as bad as that sounds. Okay. Jackie? Uh, I know we spent a whole lot of money last year uh, getting some greens fixed. Okay, if you, I, I'm gonna talk about number six right now. I mean, it's a brand new green. If you walk around it and you look, you can already see the green and black stuff coming up on it. Um, number seven, is a brand new one. I know we've been told that, uh, you know, there was some animal damage there. So here we have big old pieces of, of grass put in there. And is there any way, if, if that's the only way to get it to where it will come back, is there any way maybe you can put sand over the whole thing and level it? maybe press it or something just to get it level. It's like, I, I mean, it looks terrible. And it's, we spent what, $60,000 or something for both of those greens. And it looks like on number six, we're getting ready to face some of the problems that we had on it before we ever got a new green. So my question here is, we're getting ready to spend money on two more green, three more greens, but within a year, if they're not going to be any better condition than they are now, I mean, what do we do here? This is, uh, you know, it, it's just my question to you is what do we do? Um, so I, I can fix the issue on six relatively easily. Um, whoop. You're back. Sorry, I had a little, 
Okay, sorry. Don't get off. I can I can fish the X two on on six relatively easily. Um, um, and if I remove the the three oak trees over there on the left, that will fix six that quick. The big oaks. But on I but but I I can't cut those trees down. There's no way anybody will will let me. I mean those those trees are huge. And so when when six was constructed, we put barrier we put a barrier around the the surface, but that's that's not a um, a permanent thing. And to but to backtrack a, a little bit, um, the there there is no issues with five, six, or seven. Um, I know visually. Visually, they may look like they're struggling. They may, to the naked eye, may not look the best. But come, but come March or April, they're they're going to be ju just fine. It's um, okay, it's, it's the process of uh, of essentially a of like a newborn newborn baby, where you know the first you know six months, you really have to be careful, nurture it, you know very very delicate but you know as they grow as they get older they become more sturdy more um yeah i guess sturdy is the right the right word but yeah i mean when when you figure i mean they grew in in, in, in june you know we're only i mean the, the greens are seven months old that they're there they're, there's no issues there's not going to be any issues moving forward I, 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 even even with the the moldy looking stuff on number six, I mean, you don't think that's yes. going to be an issue? Not an issue. That's the only thing. Okay. That is the uh, the scale on six? As far as as uh, five, six, and seven are concerned, uh, it's it's been my experience in building greens, new courses, and rebuilding them that you have to give them at least two growing seasons to come into their own. Right now, the roots on those things are only about three quarters of an inch to two inches deep. Uh, we need root system on that grass on the greens upwards of three to four inches. And it, it's gonna take another another good growing season before I would say we've got a problem. Uh, the scale bothers me, but as far as the greens coming back, I feel pretty confident with Chris, that, that they will come back given a, a good growing season this summer. Darcy? I'm 100% I'm confident. We will not have oh, issues with those greens. I, I, I was just going to say, I, I hope that they're good because we just honored that contract to the same people again. So for the next no, green. It oh, it didn't? I thought it went to the same company. Didn't that? No, no, no. No, it, it, no, it did. No, it, yeah. no, yeah. it was the same yeah. company. I'm, it I'm just reading. I'm yeah. just reassuring everybody. I promise you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. next yeah. growing that, season, no issues. Yeah. That, that'll be good. I, I have no. never, I used to walk the golf course when you were allowed, but uh, <laughs> I've never really been out on it. So I'm going to have to yeah. come down and get a cart and go cruise it and see what it's like. Yeah. Just let me know. I'll be more than happy to give you the, the tour. Okay. Oh. Jackie? Uh, next question. Where's the grass on the tea boxes? It's like we're hitting off a of dirt. What happened to the grass on all the tea boxes? I, I mean, it's like there's no grass. <laughs> um, there. So with the with with the dormancy of grass. Um, once you take a divot the, this time of year, the grass does not grow back um, until the roots start re-engaging in spring or, you know, kind of the springish, you know, March, April-ish. Um, and with the record setting traffic that we're experiencing, that's compaction traffic, additional wear and tear. Appears to me that the, that the, uh, Many of the tea boxes have been leveled off with sand, which is going to present a um, hygiene is going to present a, um, a 
an unkept look. But I'm just hoping that during the spring, when the weather warms up a little bit, that they do start coming back into those tea boxes and that uh, the grass starts coming back uh, a little bit better than it has been. Well, um, well and, and, I'll, and I'll say it like, and I'll say it like this. Um, the, the decision to not overseed was ultimately my decision based on the fact of that it is proven that our golf course is more successful in peak season when we don't overseed versus when we do overseed. Mm -hmm. um, now, did I expect 70 degrees in February? No, I did not. Um, so, but when you over, I mean, it's, it's a crapshoot. Um, and I will, I will say hindsight's always twenty twenty. I wish I had overseeded tee boxes, but, but again, it's, it's a gamble. And at the time, the, the, as you're preparing the budget in, in May, you're trying to figure out, am I going to overseed in January? You, you know, it, it, so it's, it's a set, you're seven months off and, you know, it, it's a crapshoot. And yeah, I mean, I probably should have overseeded tee boxes. Not going to sit, not going to say I shouldn't have, but at the time, it's hard to justify the cost of overseeing tee boxes when you're expecting no play in that, you know, January, February timeframe. Um, yeah, but. Okay. Well, I, <clears throat> but again, I will say to touch on that point uh, again, the the grass is going to come back just fine. Um, I have no concerns about. Well, I shouldn't say no concerns. the The tee boxes will will go grass. I promise you, they won't be bare dirt uh, for forever. There are a couple of tee complexes that are that have struggled historically. Um, you know, seven, for example, has struggled historically. Six has struggled historically. So, but we do have T box renovations uh, planned for the summer. Also, uh, it's uh, it's a process of you know f fixing what you can when you can, and, and making sure that you're utilizing your your dollars as, as best you can. Thank without you. Cost, without costing citizens. Well, seven million, seven million dollars in, in a bond or, or something. Uh, strike that from the record. Uh, he didn't say that. <laughs> uh, Chris, I think I, I think they're working as hard as they can. I'm proud to see them leveling out some of those tee boxes this winter with sand. Uh, but again, like Jackie said, we're going to have to hit them. We're going to have to hit them hard probably this spring and summer with water and fertilize to really bring them back. But uh, I can appreciate well, I mean, that they they also need the leveling. Uh, oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I I won't disagree with you at, at and all. Number six. And, number six has been one of them that uh, has been hit the hardest uh, because of the leveling and, of that box. It's it's covered all the grass. But and, give, and, give, and I'll give, say the key to that chip is you hit the nail on the head is a reliable water source. Yeah. And we don't have the most reliable water source. Darcy, did you but, have a question? Okay. All right, let's um, let's let's move along here. How about the fairway conditions on holes 15 and 16? I noticed the 15 has got a, uh, a something of a berm being started. Um, those are two those are really confusing and confounding right now to the golfers. Um, I don't have a solution in my head, or at least my mind, that wouldn't cost a lot of money. Um, so, Chris, I'm kind of looking at you and saying, 
Um, what do you think? And David, you've got a question or comment? Yeah, just just a comment there. Um, they have those little round straw. Um, um, it, 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 I don't want to say a full bale of hay, but it's you, you see them at construction sites all the time to hold back water. Oh yeah. Okay, so they're round. They're probably eight feet long, somewhere around that. But if you run those down 16, 15, um, one end to the other, um, one they're biodegradable. Two, they're going to create growth. Um, you know that type of thing. Inexpensive. Um, just line them up until all that grass starts growing again and either leave them there or just move them back down to the out of bounds area um, and they'll just get recycled. Um, or just keep them there until you get a nice little mound that grows up over it uh, with grass and everything else. Uh, should be pretty inexpensive, um, probably very easy to put down. Just a nice long stripe all the way down 15 and all the way down 16. Probably encourage a lot more play. All right, so that I mean, the wear and tear of going up and down that course, you know, getting your ball on 15. I mean, you hit it way over to the cart path on 15, and then you drive all the way down to the out, out of bounds. You hit it back up, you know, thinking it stays up there. You go all the way back down. Um, it, it really adds a lot to the play time, um, and, and it's just real frustrating. But anyways, that was just my idea of, of seeing that straw, those little round straw bales. I think one of the things that's going to help is uh, is getting a good growing season. Uh, get a good growing season in here, and we, we whoever's cutting the grass can start cutting grass uh, to to help us a little bit stop the ball before it rolls into the uh, into the penalty areas. Um, L, uh, MGA has struggled with this one mightily as far as uh, what are the rules. That, that we should have on 15 and 16. Um, we have a free drop area. I see that there's a berm being constructed on 15, which is gonna help. Uh, 16 is probably gonna have to be the same thing. And I think it's a good solution, David. Those, uh, um, it's, a, um, it's a type of retention bail that they use on the highways. I've seen those. Jackie. It, it, the, the purpose of it is er, erosion control. Yep. So, you're, one, you're building up the, the fairway surface by not letting everything wash away. Right? It stops it, you know, because right now those areas are all rock. Um, yeah. So if you, yeah. you, but anyways, it was just an idea that I had. Jackie? I, I really like David's idea because, I mean, especially on number 15, it's really dangerous over there uh, in parts because it's so rocky and unlevel and everything. And I really like your your idea there. And I think it would, you know, possibly help, you know, fill it in. It would maybe a grass mound, whatever. I don't know. Number 16, though we have the bamboo again so i mean we need to get rid of the bamboo again is there like instead of just cutting it a way to eradicate it i don't think we can um there there's no way to yeah there's the no reason way. is that the bamboo was put there specifically as a screen for the sewer treatment area and we have residents who bought homes and, and live over there who probably would not be happy if we completely eliminate the bamboo. Um, I wish we could, but I think it's for it, us. It, just to, you know, again, to reiterate, the bamboo, won't, the only reason why the bamboo was a problem because the balls would run down into it. If you put that straw berm there again, you're not going to have to worry about going in there looking for your ball. It's going to stop before it gets into that that area. Um, and again, you should be able to shouldn't have any problem weed eating in front of that berm um, or in front of that straw. But it would also create a barrier from the balls going, you know, into that area. It, it, again, just you know, maybe it won't work, but just my idea. And it's, a, it's it's a design issue that that I think is is probably something that Chris needs to mull over. Um, as far as the design of the course is concerned, but for simple reason, it, the initial designer never 
did not understand that a treatment plant was going there and that a bamboo wall would be grown. Uh, the, both of the holes are very difficult. I like them, but the conditions on 15 are such without the grass this winter that it's, it's not a fair hole. It's not a playable hole. So I think it's, uh, I think it's a good idea. Chris has already started uh, on 15 with a retaining area. Uh, I believe it's going to be a block covered with soil, covered with um, uh, mulch. And that's already started. That's going to help us. That's going to help keep the balls out of that very, very low area and the backyards. And we got a drop. All I can say is, is I'm trying. <laughs> I'm you know, coming up with some stuff and, and actually, you know, and before I fail to mention the, the, the cinder blocks was actually Jackie's idea. You know, she saw him sitting over there and said, Hey, why don't you try it? And I was, Hey, that's a good idea. You know I mean? It's something that we have sitting there, not, not utilizing. And, and you, you know, the, the, the thought is, is something is better than nothing. You, you know, we're we're trying, we're trying to see what works, trying to see how we can best remedy the situation without spending quarter million dollars to to fix it. Chris, Jackie. would you just would you just look into uh, David's idea though? I I really think that's a great idea. I really do. Would you just look into that and just kind of you know, give us some feedback on it. I, I certainly will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'll include that in my memo also. Now, there's some other concerns. Uh, and I put down here on the agenda simply other concerns of, um, of the board uh, or of the committee. And one of the things I wanted to bring up tonight, I think I, uh, each one of you got a copy of the Point Venture rules and regulations. Uh, Point Venture is different than we are. Point Venture is owned by a uh, community association. It's only nine holes. But what I would like to do is I'd like to, um, Chris, I hope you didn't go away. Um, I'd like to sit down with Chris, and I've already opened discussions with uh, Brendan, uh, the the manager owner of the pub, and um, I sent a copy of this over to Chris. I'd like to I'd like to sit down and see if we can't work out a set of rules and regulations similar to this that we could a hand out and b post. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, we don't have anything like this right now. Uh, the uh, the bunker doesn't have anything like this. And I think we need a cooperative type of agreement, if you would, especially when it comes to the liquor and, and liquor on the course, bringing your own bottles, that kind of thing. Um, we could we could cause a private proprietor, or we couldn't, but someone could cause him to lose his liquor license if liquor and or beer, wine is brought on, onto the course uh, and it doesn't go through uh, the bunker in their liquor license. So we need some rules and regulations to this fact. I think we need a sign out in front of the, um, of the pro shop that just simply doesn't say you can't bring beverages on the course but spells out a little bit more in detail what the rules from the Alcoholic Control Board uh, set out for disbursement of liquor and beer <clears throat> on a facility like the golf course. Well, it shows the hours of operation, mm -hmm. not just liquor. You don't have to. Somebody, somebody's talking and I, I can't quite hear you. I think it's Dave Williams. I think he's with Gina. But Dave can talk. Good. I, I, I think the other part is 
to, you know, have the hours of operation of the restaurant and so that people know when they're open and, st and all the other stipulations that are in that, that memo. Darcy, um, I got to tell you, that's not Gina. That's, that's me. Boy, that, that's not Gina. But that's okay. I know who it is. That's the other half. I know who it is, too. <laughs> Go ahead, David. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, he was just saying that to, to post the, the hours of operation and other stipulations, there was just a lot of good information in the document that um, was obtained from Point Venture. And while we might not be owned and operated by the POA, those things can still be applicable to Lago Vista's um, course and in cooperation with the bunker. So to put something out there, um, lets everybody know what the situation is. It protects the bunker, it protects the city um, of Lago Vista, and um, it just, would appear to be a really prudent and smart undertaking for the course. Comments, David. Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand. You know, um, if we're going to follow the restrictions for the liquor license, and everything else, um, they're going to have to make sure they have plenty of um, carts out there, uh, refreshment carts out on the course. Um, otherwise, people are just going to work around. You know, the and situation they, do, there. they have been doing that. Yeah. Uh, now it's not seven days a week, but when play when play is booked or the tournament's booked, Brenda's been telling me that he does have, and I've seen him uh, have a refreshment cart out there on weekends uh -huh. and tournament days, which I thought was a great idea. I I I think putting those um, stipulations into practice would be good because I think some bad habits have been um, formed by people who frequent the course often and and have just taken upon themselves to perhaps do whatever they want to do without consideration to, um, to rules. And so there needs to be some something in writing and some education of the people that come out to play as well as I'm not sure how much true training marshals get on the course as far as directing people, um, whether it happens to be on these issues in terms of liquor, um, as well as following rules or asking people to get off the course um, as well. So somewhere in there is also some additional training for, or some training period for the marshals that are out there. My question is, who does this? I mean, I think it's a great idea. I think we should have rules and regulations. I think we ought to have a sign out front that sets up uh, alcoholic beverage uses, is, uses uh, hours of operation for not only the, uh, the course, but also for uh, the bunker. Also, uh, we, we need to know, there are several other things that we could put on a sign. Like well, you did parts in here by five thirty, or we're going to charge you extra, or something like that. Yeah. We we already have a we already have your recommendation that we're going to be putting together discussion on signage. So just add that to that signage. Okay. Very good. Darcy. I think that TCAB also uh, fire you know the ones who pass out the liquor license. They might have some signage as well if bunk ask them for it they usually have like a rule thing that says you know fire tobacco blah 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 this is, and it's official it comes with the official seal and all that and they just have to ask for that and then also why is not bunker ever on some of these meetings because i think it would be good for them maybe just to sit in on a couple of these so everybody's on the same page since you're now working hand in hand with them more or less and and their their money depends on how good the golf course is doing and the golf course you know like today they were out of business because they had a gas leak i went for lunch you know and they were they were out of business most of the day because they had a gas leak and they should have posted that immediately 
you know, and, and it's if they didn't have any lettuce to even make a salad. So these are all things that are going to diminish people coming in because you only give people, you know, here and up, up here at the lake, you only get so many chances before someone puts you on Facebook and then your business goes like that, you know, and, and talking about that being on Facebook, it was just on Facebook. I don't know if any of you read it. But the consensus of most of the people on Facebook were for bunkers. We're saying, yes, you can't, you know, you you've got to you've had the, the the ability to do it before, but now they have their liquor license and you need to abide by it. And most of the people were happy to abide by it, I think. So Hi David. Yeah, uh, one other question, um, since we're gonna be looking into signage. Um, the last I heard, and, and I don't know if it's changed, but the mayor said, hey, it's okay if you walk on the course, it's okay if you ride your bicycles, it's okay if you do all those things. Has that changed? Um, I, are, or are they still allowing all of that uh, uh, pedestrian traffic? Uh, no, uh, Mayor Tidwell and City Manager Ray, when he was here, um, posted um, um, the or, or the repeal of of that okay i was out there um the other night when i was playing and um there were people walking their dogs on the course and they're walking towards the golfer and i told them i said look just from a safety sake point of view you should not be walking towards the golfers walking away from them i said i can name several people that i know personally who have lost their eyes you know um, because they were walking towards the golfers versus away from them and i said oh okay but but to them it's okay to walk the course. That's uh, David. I agree, and that's part of the that's part of the signage that we have to put up. As far okay. as our liability is concerned, if you're going to walk on this course, you're going to have you're going to have to have your own personal liability at stake. The city can't be liable, and the golfer can't be liable because they paid a price to play on this course. It is designed for golf, but if the city wants to allow walking, then we've got to be able to police it. With signage, and that's part of part of my signage uh, uh, criteria. It's going to be signage that is, you know, if you walk, if the city allows that, uh, you're walking at your own risk. I, I think uh, the mayor posted that on January 6th, Chris, and he posted it to the golf course website and then personally on his own as well. So he yeah. did say no more, you know. But but once you let someone do it, it's kind of hard that I didn't read that, you know, you're going to get all those people. But you've got perfect places to put the signage and no walking on the course, because anywhere where the paths reach a street where somebody would park their car and come onto the course, that's a great place for a sign, you know, that says stay off the golf course, you're, you know, unless you're paying. Have them come down and join as a member, you know. <laughs> I like the way you think. What do you think about Chris? What do you think about putting together something like this with Brendan? Um, you mean Dustin? Dustin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just to clear that up. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a good idea. Um, I, I would say with him being a private business there it's hard to you can't really you know i would say have the discussions but we can't really mandate anything um on his behalf um like like they can at, at point venture with, with caddyshack being owned and operated by point venture golf club outside of the the food truck uh, there. So, but no, I, I definitely think it's worth having that conversation uh, with him and, and getting on the same page. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you on that, the private business, but he also, it's a very symbiotic relationship between he and the city at this point. And I think, uh, and I sent a copy of this to him and, um, and, and said, I'd like to sit down and discuss it with him and with you. Uh, I think that the city, should work with him and i think he'll be very he, he, he will be amenable to doing this it's for his own benefit and for the benefit of his business 
and that of the city. And, so, and Dustin and Dustin has proven, you know, I, I feel like Dustin will be very easy to work with on, on some of these things. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sure he'll be, I know he'll at least be open to, to the conversations. Okay. Then I will pass this along to the council also in my memo. If the, if, if I have an agreement for that, I don't need a motion. I just need an agreement. Okay. All right, moving along. Let's uh, let's consider scheduling items for our next committee meeting, and maybe we'll have a couple more people, and uh, we can have some more formalized issues. Uh, third Wednesday, March. That would be the February, March. It'll be the seventeenth of March. At St. Patty's Day. Is everybody comfortable with it? Excuse me. Everybody comfortable with that for a meeting date? I can't hear anybody. Uh, is, that, is that a happy hour at that meeting too? Or? Hey, I'm going to have my COVID shot by then. I'm going to be happy. So <laughs> it, it, <laughs> yeah, we could do that. We could do some green beer. I'll, I'll drink my Guinness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, Jackie. Uh, no, I agree. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm I'm fine with March 17th. Okay. Now, one one of the things that I would ask each one of you to do, please, on the committee and Chris, please, if if you have an issue that you want addressed, get it to me and let's put it on the agenda and outline it so that we can kind of formalize the thing uh, instead of just talking around it. We've got a we had a lot of general discussion tonight. Uh, I have, I think I have some good direction from the committee to put together a memo to the council, uh, kind of outlining what we said and what we uh, asked for. Um, so just send me an email or give me a phone call. David? Yeah, on that note uh, to Chris, uh, Chris, when you get these comments uh, from, from golfers and people, and I don't want to say that they're harassing you on what should and shouldn't be done, I would suggest that you tell them to to bring it up or uh, at the uh, committee meeting, the advisory committee meeting, so that we can make those recommendations through the process. Um, I, I really don't think it's fair for you to have to put up with all the, you know, the, the drive-bys, as I might say. Um, but but again, let them know or reassure to them that that there is a committee that that will listen to the recommendations and then, you know, get it process. Can I ask a question of Chris? No. Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Go ahead, Gina. Hey, Chris, on the on the on the TV screen monitor when you walk into the clubhouse, you know the entrance way. Mm -hmm. Yes, Where you post where you post information about the golf course. Is there um, information up there about the golf course advisory committee, like when the next meeting is going to be? There, there's not. No, I, I have not been doing that. Um, but again, that's another great idea. We can certainly, um, well, I guess I can't really post the agenda. We can post something, though. Um, well, just, get, just even you know. really what I was going after is just something that rolls through periodically telling people when the next meeting is. Well, yeah, absolutely. Just, just on your cat yeah. like calendar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And with and with Amanda being getting more into that role, she'll we will we can even post them on the golf course website too, on the event calendar at the golf course website. Um and then make sure that we're get we can get something up on that on that T V screen um about the advisory committee and general meeting dates and things like that. Absolutely. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Darcy? We we can also, either any of us can share that on the Facebook, too, with the link. I mean, once it once it hits the website, all we have to do is go onto the Laga Vista Community Board and post, hey, advisory committee, if anyone would like to join that is open to the public, 
and then you will get more you might not like it but you will get more people attending so <laughs> it might not it might not be so good right dick <laughs> actually if, if you just if you finally just sift through all of it, you, you usually come up with some pretty good decisions. Do you have any more comments, questions? I wanna thank all of you tonight. It's been a very good meeting. Um, I appreciate your participation. Mark Darcy, welcome. And I, I will call you Marcy about seven more times. Uh, I'm sorry, but- it's okay. Thank Thank you very much, Jackie. Thank you, David. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. David, second. Second. Ah, Jackie. All right, we have a motion to adjourn and a second. All those in favor say aye. Darcy says aye. Aye. Okay. Very good. Thank Thanks, you everybody. very much. All right.